Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for being here today. Today's video is going to be my June wrap up and I'm very excited because I read from all types of genres. I read a couple of really long books. I read a couple of books that I devoured in less than 24 hours. It's just all over the place and it was just such a fabulous reading month. I'm also excited because I have an old friend with me today. Um, this friend hasn't made an appearance in a very long time, but we hit 200,000 subscribers and I want to say thank you so much for that. And I thought, let's, let's throw it back a little bit to this hairstyle, which was like a signature, this shirt, which I still, still wear all the time in videos. So that's not really that surprising, but an old friend, which is Mike's Lemonade. Around the corner, Wait a minute, I think I know this song. I do want to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel. It means a lot and I'm very happy that you're all here. Oh, I also should have started the video with a joke. That would have really been a throwback. If you know, you know. You know? You know. All right, I'm gonna have some more of this and we're gonna talk about the books. Of course, as with every wrap up, I have to ask a series of questions. Number one, favorite book of the month. That one's always a guarantee. Number two, Biggest surprise of the month. Now that could be a book that you thought you were gonna love that you didn't like. Trust me, I have one of those on my list and we'll get to it shortly. Um, or maybe a book that you thought like, whatever, I'll read it, but I might not love it. And then you devoured it. And then favorite new fictional character. Like what was your favorite fictional character you read this month? I will try to answer all of these questions as I'm talking about these books but that's what I've got. So let's do this thing. <laughs> anyway, the first book that I read this month, which feels like it was three years ago. <laughs> I don't know why, but I feel like maybe I just read so many genres that it feels like this book was from a different era. Uh, but anyway, I read Funny You Should Ask. I really liked this book. It's basically about a celebrity interviewer who is hired to interview the newest James Bond that no one thinks will be a good James Bond because he's like from Montana and he's not British. And so she's hired to basically like, they go on like a lunch date and it's supposed to be like, he's actually really cool and charming. But what was supposed to just be a lunch turns into a weekend of fun and a weekend of memories between the two of them. Um, so that's like part of the novel. The other part of the novel is shooting forward 10 years where she is re-interviewing him and um, they're seeing if maybe there's still some connection in the old emotional tank between the two of them. There's some chemistry. That's, <laughs> that was a weird way to put that, but <laughs> there's some chemistry between the two of them and they're seeing if maybe it's still there and what can happen because 10 years is a long time and like who, are they now? We don't know. So overall, I thought it was really great. The cover is also really great. And it just really pulled up my celebrity interviewer heartstrings because there was a time when my dream job was to be the female Jimmy Fallon. The Jimmy female, if you will. So instead of Fallon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, anyway, I enjoyed it. And you know, it's just fun. All right, the next book that I read this month was for my book club with Joel and Elias, which is the Late Night Book Club. There's no like special sign up. You just have to follow us on Instagram and sign up for our Discord if you're interested, because that's where we announce the books. And then we do a live show every month. But uh, at the beginning of June, we did the live show for Piranesi. And let me tell you, friends, this one was a trip <laughs> because I was expecting Greek mythology. And I don't think I'm far off from that. Cause I mean, like, look at the cover. You know what I mean? I'm not, it's not shocking that I would have thought that's where this was going. Um, what's shocking is how wrong I was, <laughs> okay? Um, this is all about some guy named Piranesi who was in a, it's kind of a fantasy labyrinth. So I was expecting mythology. It's definitely more fantasy. Um, and this guy is in a labyrinth of rooms and uh, he just believes that that is where he is. He, it's just him and this other guy named The Other, very creative. Um, and it's just the two of them in this huge labyrinth and they are both 
working towards something. I think Piranesi is working towards like just exploring the labyrinth and just investigating it. Whereas the other is looking for like the ultimate knowledge around life and the meaning of life and I think immortality. I don't really know what the other's deal is. I just know that I'm Team Piranesi till the end of time. I thought it was fantastic. The audiobook is also fantastic. The narrator, who's a famous actor, does an incredible job. And I just thought this was really good. So definitely unexpected. Not the mythology I thought I was getting, but this intricate labyrinth was really fun to read. So I enjoyed it. Next up we have, yes, my new all-time favorite memoir I've ever read, and that is Finding Me by Viola Davis. This was incredible. Not only is it just an incredible memoir, but if you listen to the audiobook and you have such a beautiful, artistic, powerful, performance-type voice like Viola Davis's is, it really expands the experience of reading. So if you're able to get the audiobook with this one or just the audiobook, then it is incredibly worth it. The audiobook was sensational. Um, so again, this is Viola Davis memoir and it's not just about her acting career. I think it's easy for actors to do that where they like just lean on their careers when they're exploring their lives. But in fact, you get all of her life. You get it from childhood to young teenager, to young adult, to college, to, and then you kind of get into the acting of like her first times in like plays and on Broadway and like how she broke out in the industry, stuff like that and how hard it was. And it was just spectacular. I think what's also wonderful about this memoir is that it's both memoir and hero's journey. And if you've read it, you probably know what I mean, but like, in the first two chapters, she really sets you up for like, hey, this is the definition of a hero and I am that. And let me tell you why. And it was just exceptional. I mean, it was just truly exceptional. I couldn't stop listening to it. I couldn't put it down. I fell in love with so many lines in this book, specifically the very last three sentences of chapter two. Oh my God, I called my best friend and I was like, you need to read this book. And all I had to do was read the last three sentences of chapter two and she immediately went and downloaded it. So I thought it was fantastic. New favorite memoir, I loved it so much. If you're able to get the audiobook, I highly, highly, highly recommend it. And it goes into all of her life. So there is trauma, there is heartache, there is abuse. So I just wanna make sure that you're aware of that before you pick it up. Anyway, I loved it. I thought it was great. All right, next up I read Yerba Buena. And I talked about this at my mid-year freakout tag, but I loved this book. It was, it's been one of my favorite books that I've read this year. And I think the reason why is because there's definitely a romance in it. Um, and you know that from the synopsis because it talks about the two of these women meeting but it really explores each of their lives individually before they ever meet. And so you're really watching each of them get a slice of the narrative, each of them sustaining trauma, hurt, heartbreak, other relationships, other types of relationships as well, like friendship and siblingship and father-daughter relationship. So like you kind of see them go through a myriad of, oh my God, bingo word, that was awesome. Anyway, a myriad of other relationships before they even meet each other. And then you're just like bracing for when they're gonna meet and you don't know when it's gonna happen. You don't know how it's gonna happen. And you know, eventually they meet and it's also not an easy road. So it's not like you watch them go through things separately and then they meet and they're like, oh my God, all our problems are solved and we're in love. Definitely not that. Like it takes them a while to even happen. And when they happen, it's not a perfect relationship. And I just really enjoyed it. The audiobook is also narrated by my queen, my savior, my angel on earth, Julia Whalen. Love her to death. She has narrated some of my favorite audiobooks. And so it was great to like, 
I thought the story itself was awesome, but then hearing Julia Whalen deliver it to us was also immaculate. So I really loved this one. All right, the next book I read was Written in the Stars, and this is a romance that takes place in Seattle between a woman named Elle and a woman named Darcy. Now, the two of them go on a first date, and it is a tragic first date. <laughs> it is awful. It is awkward. It is rude. Like the whole time I was reading their first date, I was like, okay, <laughs> I want to stop reading right now because I'm uncomfortable. So they have a terrible first date and then they end up getting wrapped up in a fake dating plot. You know, I'm a sucker for a fake dating plot. And from there you kind of watch as the two of them figure out what's possible between the two of them. In every romance, there is a sense of like, we can't be together and here's why. And also there's always a bunch of miscommunication where like, one of the characters is always wondering what the other one is feeling. And in this book, I actually felt like there was really excellent communication. <laughs> like they were both like, this is what I want and I'm not gonna compromise. And then the other person would be like, well, that's interesting because this is what I want and I already told you that. <laughs> and so I really enjoyed just the honesty, the open communication. I really loved Elle's character and how she like really stood up for herself and what she wants in terms of love and romance. And I really enjoyed this. The steam was also great. So. All right, the next book I read this month was Real Life. I finally read it, my friends, and I totally understand why so many people love this book. What's really interesting, and we'll get into what the book's about in a second, but our main character is, is getting his graduate degree in the scientific field. And so right away, you get a couple of, I'd say the first chapter is really science heavy and it's like really lab heavy. Like you're in a lab with him doing experiments. And I was like, this is like, oddly scientific and I didn't know I was signing up to like be in a lab the whole time. But then what's great is that after chapter one, the main character kind of puts his friendships and relationships under a microscope and really starts to analyze his interactions in his group of friends and how they treat him and microaggressions. And so the setup of chapter one with this very scientific lab environment to then translate into a microscopic look at issues within his relationships was really brilliant. So I really enjoyed that. But basically this book is all about this man named Wallace and he is a black gay man living in a predominantly white town and in a predominantly white field of study at his university. And so that's a lot of what he's putting under the microscope is how his white colleagues and counterparts are treating him how they don't stand up for him, how they kind of allow the misuse of him and his time and energy and how he feels like he doesn't have the space to speak up for himself in these circles. We're also seeing under the microscope his budding relationship with another student named Malcolm. Miller, not Malcolm, start up this relationship, but it's kind of a secret. And so you're even putting it under the microscope this relationship and how Miller treats Wallace and what it means between the two of them. And is it serious? Is it not serious? And I really enjoyed this book. Again, in chapter one, I was like, this is really scientific. But then once you get through chapter one, I just mean that when I was reading chapter one, I was like, I was not expecting to like be in a science lab. So there was a part of me that was like, I don't know if this is really gonna be for me, but once you get past chapter one, you totally understand. At least my interpretation was that the author brilliantly gave you an experience of study and analyzing the elements and then you see that translate into the relationships around Wallace and how people are treating him. So I really enjoyed it. I totally understand why so many people love this book and I'm so glad I read it this month. All right, so the next book that I read this month was Woman Eating and this book was awesome. First of all, I read it as a buddy read with Jalen from Bar in the Bookcase and Jess from Jess Decker Reads, two people I love dearly, but 
I have talked about this. I took, or I was a TA for a vampire tradition course last fall. So I studied the vampire tradition. I watched it over centuries and like how it's developed over time. And so reading a book about, which this is what the book's about. <laughs> the book is about a modern day vampire, like a woman vampire who is living in like modern, the modern world. And so she goes through modern issues. Like she needs to find an apartment. She has a full-time job as like, she works at like a gallery. And she also on the side needs blood to sustain her life, right? So like she's going through like normal life stuff, but then is also super hungry all the time for blood. <laughs> so it's like really, really cool. And it's not like cheesy. It's not like confessions of a teenage drama queen. I don't know why that is the piece of media I just pulled out of my head, but it's not like silly vampire stuff. It's very much like, she is a woman living in today's world. Something else I loved is that there's definitely a very toxic relationship between her and her vampire mother because her vampire mother has never accepted herself as a vampire. Um, so like she knows that she's a vampire, but she's like, this is the devil working in me. I am a horrible creature. I don't deserve love. I don't deserve to eat. I am just this demon walking the earth and I should be punished. And so like the mom hates herself so much and she transfers that self-loathing to her daughter. So I just thought that was so interesting because then you're watching as like this generational trauma and like generational self-loathing seeps into our main character and like how how she talks about herself and thinks about herself is so toxic because that's all she saw her mother do. Um, and I just thought it was great. I thought it was really, really interesting. I really enjoyed it. And the audiobook for this book is fantastic. Whoever casted the narrator did a phenomenal job because she is like breathy and sad and a little gravelly and just like, it's so good the way that she narrates this book. So highly recommend, I really enjoyed it. And I think it was a great addition to the tradition. And that rhymed and I didn't mean it to. So for that, <laughs> I get a sip. <laughs> okay, next up we have Nora Goes Off Script. Now I have seen this book everywhere since I picked it up, but before I picked it up, it just caught my eye on the shelf. I hadn't really heard anyone talk about it. And I was like, what's this about? And it basically is in the same vein as Funny You Should Ask, as in there is a main character named Nora who writes romance movies for like the Hallmark Channel, basically. And so that's how she makes her living. She doesn't make a huge living, but she just writes these like really formulaic romances. And that's how she lives her life. And she has just recently gone through a divorce. She's a single mom of two, and she decides to write a screenplay about her divorce and her husband's treatment of her. And then that screenplay gets turned into a massive major movie. And so at the very beginning of the book, the movie set, like the director asks to film part of it at her actual house because something she describes is really beautiful in the screenplay and he wanted it to capture it like actually on the movie. So the whole, like all the actors show up, the director shows up, they're shooting in her house for like two days. And then the main actor in the movie wants to stay at her house for like another week. And so she has the super famous actor living with her and she's obviously attracted to him because apparently he's like a super hot Hollywood star and they have a connection. And to her, she's like, I'm like a divorced mom of two. Like, why would this movie star be looking at me? I'm confused. And he's like, wow, I miss real life. I hate that everyone treats me like an object instead of someone with actual feelings and an opinion. And so you kind of watch as they develop into something and then things go terribly wrong. And I won't say how or why, but I was hooked. I read this book so fast. This was the book that I read in 24 hours. And it was a book again that I hadn't really heard about. So when I saw it and I was like, all right, I like the colors, I'll read. Okay, it's about a movie star. It's about a love story. Okay, I'll pick it up. I did not expect to devour it in the way that I did. 
Okay, I am turning red in the face. That's partly because it's really warm, but mainly because of Sir Michael. Um, so if I'm looking really red in the face, that's what's going on. Anyway, let's move on to my biggest surprise of the month. Um, at the beginning of the video, I asked like, what's a book you loved that you weren't expecting? Or what was a book that you didn't like that you thought you were gonna love? And my surprise is that I thought I was gonna love this book and it fell really flat for me, and that was Hyde. This is a horror novel that takes place at an abandoned amusement park, and that's super cool to me. I thought that was a great concept. It's basically 14 contestants participate in a seven-day hide-and-go-seek extravaganza, and then each day, two are eliminated, and at the end, whoever's the last one standing gets $50,000. Super cool concept, was really excited, but sadly, it was not my favorite. And there's a few reasons for that. The first reason is that 14 contestants is a lot of characters to cover, and it's a pretty short book, and so you get hardly any backstory on a lot of the characters and then way too much backstory on other characters. So it like feels really uneven. It feels like you don't really care about any of the characters because you don't know when they're going to get eliminated from the contest. And you're like, well, some of you are getting a big backstory, so I think you matter. But then suddenly you're gone and I don't know if you're going to come back or not or like if that's the end of your story. So I just think 14 contestants is a lot of people to talk about. I know that Lucy Foley writes a lot of thrillers that deals with kind of an ensemble cast, but that's that is almost too much and it's only like five or six characters in her books. So to do with 14 was just a lot and it was a lot of like sifting through backstories and like what was important, what did I actually need to know? like what information was actually useful. And that was a little distracting. The other thing is that like, you find out very fast that this hide and go seek thing is not as innocent as it might seem. It is a horror novel. So something has to go wrong. And the thing that goes wrong is not that interesting to me. The main thing that's going wrong feels like another very famous horror novel. And so when I was reading it, I'm like, I've kind of already read this and I was hoping that the horror direction was gonna be something totally different. So so anyway, yeah, those are my two main things. I wanted a different like villainous thing going on or a different scary thing going on. And I just think that 14, it's just too many for such a short book. So there you go. All right, everyone, next up we have, I'm gonna say this is another huge surprise of the month because I honestly did not expect to read this this month, but then so many of you sung this book's praises on my summer TBR video that I knew I had to pick it up. And that is Project Hail Mary. More like Project Holy Shit, I think Noelle loves sci-fi, okay? <laughs> Didn't expect it, ended up loving it. I, well, I guess I just spoiled it for you, but yes, I loved this book. It was an adventure to say the least. It was so good. It was so fun. It was exhilarating. It was thrilling. It was heartwarming. I fucking cried at one moment. Actually, I think two moments. And there was a genuine twist that I did not expect which was just phenomenal and super fun. So can you tell that like, <laughs> I really loved it. I feel like my energy just like sky rocketed. Hey, that's very fitting. Um, anyway, this book is all about um, a guy who wakes up on a space shuttle, light years and light years from earth and doesn't know why he's there. <laughs> he's, he wakes up alone on this spacecraft and is like, first of all, who am I? I don't know my name. And secondly, what the fuck am I doing on a spaceship? <laughs> um, and so you kind of watch as his memory starts to come back to him and you start to figure out why he's on the spaceship. And the basic plot is that he needs to save the earth because something is destroying the sun 
and if the sun dies, then Earth dies. And so he has been sent to try to save the sun, essentially. But he is light years and light years and light years from home. And again, he's trying to piece together his memory. And I thought that was exceptional because you obviously need backstory, but you start the story on a spaceship. <laughs> so you're like, okay, I'm intrigued, but also what the hell is happening? And so you kind of piece together the story with him because he's also trying to regain his memory, which was really great. The other thing is that I have heard from a lot of people that this book is just really scientific. That's why it's hard to get through. And I agree, it is really scientific. I think for me, a lot of it was just being like, I'm gonna let go and let God because I don't understand what is happening. And that's fine. I'm not a scientist. I'm just here for the fun. But the other thing is that the author makes the main character a junior high science teacher. So in a lot of moments when the science feels overwhelming, the main character will pause and be like, hey, this is what that means. And he'll break it down for the reader without really breaking the fourth wall. I felt like it was done in a clever way, not in a cheesy way, but he breaks down something super scientific in a more palatable way. And I loved that. So I also saw so many people say that if I'm gonna read this, I should get the audiobook. I listened to all of you, I got the audiobook, and it was fantastic. The narrator was great, but also there is another life form that is communicating with our main character. And without the audiobook, it would have been really weird to read that <laughs> because they're just symbols on the page. But in the audiobook, it's like vocalized and it's super cool. I also just think that the narrator was awesome and like made it really funny in a really cool way. So. I loved this book. Again, I cried. It was so hopeful. The ending is perfect, in my opinion. I have no complaints about the ending. I thought it was perfect. I'm not kidding. The last sentence, I was like, you're kidding me, right? How did you think of that? So I loved it. And thank you to everyone who told me to read this. You were all so right, in my opinion. And now all I want to do is read sci-fi. So please tell me what my next sci-fi should be because holy shit, I loved it. Okay, my camera is dying and it's a good thing. Well, that's not a good thing, but it's good because this is my final book and that is Phantom of the Opera. Now I'm doing a live show for this with my book club with Joel and Elias. Uh, today, actually, if you're watching this video today, that I'm doing a live show today. But if you want to see like our full thoughts on this, that will be happening on the live show. Again, you can follow us on Instagram and Discord. But to just give you a little brief kind of impression, I actually finished this right before I started filming this video. So I feel like I haven't really worked out my full opinions. But Parts of this book were fucking phenomenal, like really beautiful writing, really interesting, like kind of like fantastical story of love and betrayal. It, I mean, it's really, really dramatic and really cool, but I think because I've just seen the musical a few times, I just have a, a better connection to the musical and how it's played out on stage. And I think that might be how a lot of people could experience this book. I'm not saying that is how everyone experiences it, but if you know the musical and you know the music and you've seen it performed, then this book, I mean, it's just like the fictionalized version of the book. And for me, I really enjoy the performance of Phantom of the Opera. So I'm not saying the book is bad in any way. I just think that I'm more attached to the performance and the music and how it all comes together. But it was a really cool classic to dive into. And I was just in France in March and I wish I would have gone to the opera house. My sister did because she loves Phantom of the Opera and I'm super jealous that I didn't go do that with her. <laughs> One thing I really did love about this book is that the Phantom is called the Opera Ghost and so he signs his letters OG. And that's just awesome. So <laughs> that is the final book of this video. I feel like this was also just a really long video. So thanks so much for sitting with me, chatting with me and, you know, listening to all that I read this month. I loved it. It was a great phenomenal reading month. I don't know how another month this year will top June's reading because I just read from so many genres and I read so many good books. Anyway, my friends, that's the end of this video. 
I hope you enjoyed. I know that I did. I hope you had fun, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!